Many doctors will say that creatine will damage your kidneys. They're wrong. Creatine was first discovered in 1832 by a French chemist, Michel Eugier Chevrel, <laughs> when he isolated it from a muscle tissue. In 1847, a German chemist, Justus von Liebig, confirmed Michel Eugier Chevrel's findings and demonstrated that creatine was present in significantly higher concentration in muscles than in any other tissues. Now in the early 1900s, people began to see if creatine could be used as a performance enhancer. In the 1990s, its commercialization led to huge widespread consumption amongst the fitness world. Around this time, fears of kidney damage and water retention began to set in. These are wrong. I'm Dr. Fahad and we're going to do a deep, exhaustive dive into creatine and break down some misconceptions along the so way. Creatine is what we call a high energy phosphate donor. Anytime your muscles need to contract, they need to use up energy, ATP, to do that. And in doing so, ATP is broken down to ADP and phosphate. Now what happens with creatine is it meets an enzyme called creatine kinase. This adds a phosphate group, so it turns creatine into phosphocreatine or creatine phosphate. It doesn't really matter, it's the same thing. When your muscles have used up that ATP and produced ADP in that phosphate group, that creatine phosphate can give its phosphate back to ADP, turning it back into ATP, so that, in other words, your muscles can go again. That's how it works. And we're going to break down the first myth here, and that's that creatine is not natural. Your body naturally produces creatine. On top of that, you can find it in food such as meat, fish, and eggs. So now that you see how it works, you can probably guess how it might be beneficial to supplement with this because you'll increase your creatine stores, and as a result of that, not only can it increase strength, build up muscle mass, improve the overall quality of your training, but there's evidence that it might be neuroprotective. It doesn't really happen much in the UK, but I believe in America they've started doing studies on this where they give people who've had traumatic brain injuries creatine. There's also another paper suggested that for older adults, creatine may even help them improve their memory. These studies aren't perfect, but they're very encouraging results to begin with. In fact, this comes to dispel another myth that creatine should only be taken for those people who are young and going to the gym. But there's now evidence that those who are older will probably have greater cognitive benefits than those who are younger when they take creatine. Kidney damage. Let's talk about kidney damage. For many years, doctors have believed that taking creatine can damage your kidneys. The reason for this is creatine is broken down into a product called creatinine. Creatinine is used in a formula to estimate your GFR, your glomerular filtration rate. This is essentially a surrogate marker of how well your kidney function is performing. And it's based on serum creatinine. Serum creatinine is very, very imperfect and it's got its flaws. It's a very cheap way of doing it, which is why we often use it in the UK. But essentially, if you supplement with creatine, your creatinine numbers change. And the way that the formula works means that it shows an artificial deterioration in your kidney function. In fact, there's a recent paper published in a really good scientific journal, which just showed that we should really be using something called cystatin C. There's absolutely no evidence whatsoever in the literature that taking creatine damages your kidneys or it causes a deterioration within your kidney function. Another common conception is you'll get a lot of water retention and as a result of that suffer from dehydration and cramps. Now there is some truth to this but to be honest it's overstated. The reason for this is creatine is an osmotically active substance so essentially it draws water into the muscles. There's an increasing amount of evidence that this in itself acts as an anabolic signal so it causes muscles to get bigger. A few people can suffer with stomach cramps but to be honest it's a very very small proportion of people and m most of the side effects tend to be GI related and bloating seems to be the thing that's most commonly reported by people but not everyone gets them. One really shit quality study found that some people experienced hair loss. In fact it was statistically significant that people who were taking creatine experienced hair loss but to be honest this hasn't been replicated in any other study whatsoever what if you're pregnant is it safe to take creatine then the honest answer is there isn't enough literature to actually tell us we do know that creatine demands go up in pregnancy and there is evidence that creatine is neuroprotective there's a huge variety of creatine supplements you can take overwhelmingly the most researched creatine supplement is creatine monohydrate it also happens to be the cheapest if you're thinking of supplementing to be honest creatine monohydrate that's the one you should get now how do you take it now lots of numbers are thrown around most commonly you'll hear three to five grams sometimes you'll hear 0.01 grams per kilogram per day other ones you'll hear 0.03 grams per kilogram per day sometimes people say oh you need to load it you need to take 20 to 30 grams a day for the first week and then drop back later down the idea with creatine is you're not going to get immediate results i would save your money don't load it take it daily instead take a small amount somewhere between three to five grams daily the idea is that you need to saturate your muscles with creatine which happens over time sure you can load it and you'll saturate them quicker but 
Creatine is a long-term game. All the studies that have looked at performance improvements find that over the long term, whether you load it or whether you take a small amount daily and consistently are equivocal. Creatine is a tool that can enhance your training. If you haven't understood the fundamental principles of training, nutrition, sleep, and how, the, how important these are for your recovery, then I wouldn't recommend taking creatine. If you've nailed that, then take it. If you like this video and you want to know a few more tools about how you can improve your exercise, click here.